Good morning and welcome to worship again with Rosewood First Baptist Church. The Bible says in all things we are to give praise and to give thanks. So I guess even during this time of being quarantined, God still wants us to give him praise. Would you stand at your home and sing with us, Every Praise is to Our God. Good morning. Welcome to Rosewood First Baptist Church. We are glad that you have tuned in today and it is a beautiful day and we give the Lord the praise for that. If you do not have a church home, we welcome you to uh, join with us as we uh, portray this each week. And when we start meeting together again, we welcome you to join with us. First of all this morning, I would like to talk to our children in our kids' corner and the scripture, let me read the scripture for our kids this morning. Jesus said, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. John chapter 17, verse 11. Now this morning I brought some sticks with me and you know how many people, every one of our kids 
could take this little pine stick and break it in half. It's not hard to do. You can break it in your hands because it's just one stick. But if I bundle them together with a rubber band and try to break them, uh, I don't think any of us could do that. Maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger or somebody like that could, but the thing is when you bundle these sticks together, they're all the same kind of sticks and you can break one of them, but when you bundle them together, they become so very strong. It's easy. The, the sticks in the bundles are just like the sticks that can teach us an important lesson this morning. What about the church? What is the church? We're, we're not meeting together now, kids, are we? We're, we're having to do this on YouTube and, and Facebook and, and share our services together. But the church is not a place that you go. The church is all the people that gather there, the followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some people say, well, I can, I can be a Christian and, and not go to the church worship services. And that may be true because we're experiencing that right now. But by ourselves, like that one stick, we're not very strong. And when Satan comes and tempts us to do something that we should not do, if we're by ourselves and not around other followers of Jesus, it's so easy for us to fall into that temptation and not follow Jesus. Those that are gathered together who are the church are strengthened by our Lord Jesus. And we encourage each other and we'll be much stronger than if we were by ourselves. One day Jesus went up on the mountain to pray. And he prayed a prayer that we find in John 17 that he knew that he was getting ready to leave this world as he would die on the cross for our sins, be raised up on the third day, and then ascend to the right hand of the Father in heaven. And he knew that they would be in this evil world and have to live here. And so he knew if they would come together and be one like that bundle of sticks all bound together, that they would be so much stronger than they would be as individuals. So he prayed and asked God the Father to protect them, to help them to be one, just as he and the Father are one. And then when Satan comes to tempt us to do wrong things, we'll be joined together and we'll get encouragement from one another and we'll be able to help one another. There is strength in unity. Let's pray together. Our Father, do protect us. Help us in these days that we are facing as we are uh, living in quarantine and as we come to the close of phase one, Lord, we'll have a little bit more freedom, but we pray for your protection and that we will be one and united as believers, just as you and our Heavenly Father are. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
This morning we're going to close out this little series I've been doing on prayer and we're going to ask the question, why does it seem like sometimes our prayers are unanswered? Habakkuk, the Old Testament prophet, asked God that question. Listen as I read Habakkuk 1, 1 through 4. The prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received, How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed. The justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is in peril. A bishop in the Church of England Lancelot Andrews served as the royal chaplain to Queen Elizabeth I and later on to King James I and King Charles I. He was fluent in 15 languages and when the Hampton Court Conference convened in 1604, he was chosen to be one of the translators of the proposed New English Bible. And when the King James Version came out in 1611, his contribution could be seen in the Pentateuch, the first five books of Moses, and in the historical books. Here's one of his prayers. Lord, be thou within me to strengthen me, without me to keep me, above me to protect me, beneath me to uphold me, before me to direct me, behind me to keep me from straying, round about me to defend me. Blessed be thou, O Lord our Father, forever and ever. There was a painter painting someone's house in the neighborhood, and the people that owned the house had a little dog and every day that the painter was there he the little dog would go to the back door and bark and bark and bark never stopping all day until someone let him out one day the painter was there and the owners of the house were gone And true to form, that little dog went to the back door and barked and barked incessantly all day. The sad thing about it was that that little dog and his little brain, it had not dawned on him that all of his barking was totally useless. No one was home to hear the dog bark. When a young lady was sick in the hospital, she told her pastor that it seemed like so often when she prayed, her prayers never got through the ceiling above her. And it seemed as if no answer came to her. How many times has that been your experience and my experience? We earnestly cry out to God but it seems like no answer comes. We wait and wait until finally that anguished cry erupts from the very depths of our soul as it did from the soul of the Old Testament prophet Habakkuk. O Lord, how long must I call for help before you will listen? I shout to you in vain. There is no answer. Why does it seem so many times that our prayers are unanswered? Let's consider this morning four reasons why. Our prayers are unanswered at times because of something in the plan of God. 
Most of us believe that the Bible de depicts only spiritual successful men and women so finely tuned in with God that the answers to the prayers are almost automatic. There was Abraham's servant praying to God's, for God's direction in finding a wife for Isaac in Genesis 24. And almost before the words were out of his mouth, he looked up and there was Rebekah. There was Moses at the Red Sea praying for God's deliverance in Exodus 14, 15. And before his upreached hands, the waters of the sea parted. There was Gideon in Judges chapter 6 putting out that fleece and it would be dry when he asked it to be dry and then the next day it would be wet when he asked it to be wet. There was Hannah praying for a son there in 1 Samuel and being blessed with the gift of a little boy, Samuel. There were Elijah's prayers which controlled the rain and then brought down from heaven a flame which consumed the sacrifices and convicted the hearts of the people gathered at Mount Carmel. 1 Kings 18. Take a deeper look into the Bible, however, and we'll discover there are many unanswered prayers as answered prayers. The characters of the Bible were not super saints of whom answers from God were automatic. They too faced the discouraging reality of unanswered prayer. In Deuteronomy 34, Moses once again prayed to God that God would allow him to go into the promised land. But he died instead on Mount Nebo without entering the land that God had promised Israel. Paul prayed three times in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 for the removal of that exasperating physical handicap that he called a thorn in the flesh. Instead, for the rest of his life, he was compelled to make the best of it. Even Jesus himself in Gethsemane's garden in Mark, Matthew 26, cried over and over again to the Father for release from that appalling cup of the cross. Instead, Jesus had to go out and that, and that day drink it to the, to the dregs. The Bible is full of unanswered prayers. And a closer look at the three examples that I just gave will help us to understand why sometimes our prayers go unanswered. Why was Moses refused the passage into the promised land? The background of that was his refusal and his disobedience and immaturity on, on Moses' part before God. In response to the cry of the people that they had no water, he went to God and God told him to speak to the rock. But in his anger at the people, he took his staff and struck the rock and disobeyed God. But he did it in disobedience and he did it in such a way that it brought attention to himself and not to God. Although the people's immediate need was met, this act of immaturity and disobedience by Moses would leave deep scars on the life of the nation if it was not clearly dealt with. They had to be taught the importance of obedience, taught in such a way that they would never forget. This was to be the way God chose. He would teach them the seriousness of disobedience by refusing Moses the right to enter into the promised land. 
that ungranted petition taught the Israelite people the lesson of obedience as no commandments and no smoking mountain or no drowning Egyptian army would ever do. It became the common talk in every tent, the bedside story of every Hebrew mother for centuries to come. Moses was a great man, but he could not come into the promised land because he did not obey God, the mothers would tell their children. His prayer was denied so that the nation of Israel could be taught the importance of obeying God. Why was Paul refused his request? Behind this refusal was the, the strong will of, of the Apostle Paul. Many times the strong will of Paul came into conflict with the will of God. And the prickling of that thorn in his flesh was a constant reminder that Paul must be daily under the dependence of God and not himself. It molded the Apostle Paul into a greater instrument for God's work. Why was Jesus refused his request in the Garden of Gethsemane? What Christian cannot answer that question? Were his requests granted, there would have been no cross. Were there no cross, there would be no crown of victory. And were there no crown of victory, there would be no eternal life. Jesus' request was denied by the Father so that the rivers of redemption might flow from Calvary's mount through the church and then to the uttermost parts of the world. In each of these three examples, we see that the prayer was denied so that a far greater purpose could be served by God. Now that's not all of the answer, but it is certainly part of it. Sometimes our prayers are unanswered because God has His plan in another way which will mean infinitely more to us and to His kingdom in the long run. Why are our prayers unanswered? Sometimes it's because of our selfishness. The Bible says in James 4, 3, You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. This is a common answer to explain unanswered prayer. We ask out of our selfishness to God to fulfill our desires and not in the name of Jesus and not in according to God's will. John 14, 13 suggests that the object of prayer is that God, the Father, to be glorified. And that's the primary end and aim of prayer. But many times, we use prayer as an Aladdin's lamp to attain for ourselves the desires of our flesh. We use prayer in other words, to glorify ourselves instead of glorify God. This does not mean we cannot ever pray for ourselves. We can when the motive is right. When our motive is unselfish. We can pray for ourselves unselfishly as long as our motives is not comfort but conforming to the will of God. As long as these things we desire are not ends in themselves, but merely gains to the greater end, which is to glorify God. That's the challenge that comes when our prayers are unanswered. Quit praying selfishly to the Father, but instead begin to pray Father, glorify yourself in, my, in your life, 
In my life, glorify yourself. In my home, glorify yourself. In my work, glorify yourself. In my school, glorify yourself. And when we start praying like that, we will begin seeing the answers in our lives because of the reason we asked but do not receive is that we ask and spend it on our own pleasures, selfishness. Why do our prayers go unanswered? Sometimes it's because of our sinfulness. Listen to the way that Isaiah the prophet put it in Isaiah 59, 1 through 2. This is from the Living Bible. The Lord isn't too weak to save you. He isn't getting deaf. He can hear you when you call. But the trouble is that your sins have cut you off from God. Because of sin, He has turned His face away from you and will not listen anymore. It's not because God's arm is shortened that our prayers are unanswered. It's because of our sin. It's not because God is hard of hearing that our prayers are unanswered. It's because of our sin. It's not because prayer doesn't work that our prayers are unanswered. It's because of our sin. The problem when our prayers are unanswered is not with God. The problem is not with prayer. The problem is with us. Our sins have cut us off from Him. If we're serious about wanting to experience the uplifting, invigorating power of prayer in our life, then we follow the pattern that God ordained and outlined to His people through Solomon. 1 Corinthians seven fourteen. you know well. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Answered prayers are preceded by genuine confession of sin. And finally, why are our prayers not answered? Well, it's because we're spiteful. Jesus' statement in Matthew 5, 23 through 24 says that we cannot harbor grudges and evil in our hearts. We cannot wish for another person's harm. We cannot allow the wicked whisper of hatred to dwell within us and still find answers to our prayers. No person can be wrong with each other and right with God at the same time. So the greatest cause of our feebleness in prayer is bitterness and hatred towards someone else. And that must be taken care of. A father took his small son to town one day to run some errands. And when lunchtime arrived, the two went to a cafe to have lunch together. And the father picked up his little son and put him on the stool beside him. They ordered lunch, and when the waiter brought the lunch, the father said, Son, we'll just have a silent prayer. Dad got through praying first and waited for his son to finish, but he just sat with his head bowed for an unusually long time. And finally, when he looked up, his father asked, what in the world were you praying for all of that time? And with the innocence and honesty of a child, he replied, how do I know? It was a silent prayer. When Robert Louis Stevenson was a boy, he once remarked to his, mom, to his mom, Mama, you can't be good without praying. 
How do you know, Robert, her mo his mom asked. He said, because I've tried. I think I would have been that way as a boy, too. And that brings back another story that would, reminds me sometimes of my boyhood. There was a little fella that was sent to bed early because he had been bad. And a short time later, he came out and said to his mother, I've been, I've been thinking about what I did, and so I said a prayer. And his mother said, that's fine. If you ask God to make you good, he will help you. And the little boy said, oh, I didn't ask, me to help, ask him to help me be good. I asked him to help me help you to put up with me. And I think I prayed that many times too. To the agonizing prayer of the to the agonizing prayer of the prophet Habakkuk, which all too often is expressed from our lips, O oh Lord, how long must I call for help before you? And you will listen. We've seen some specific answers this morning from God's Word. And this challenge comes to us. If we remove from our prayers the shadows of selfishness, sinfulness, and if we patiently seek to understand more fully the deep mysteries of God's purpose in our lives, and put away our spitefulness, then we will once more the truth of that promise that Jesus gave us. Ask what you will, and it shall be given unto you. And God will begin to answer our prayers. This morning, if you're having trouble in your prayer life, get on your knees and ask your God, our God to forgive you of your selfishness, your sinfulness, and your spitefulness of trying to do things on your own instead of depending totally upon our Heavenly Father. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning, know this, that God loves you, and yet because of sin in our lives, we are condemned before God. But even while we were still sinners, God sent His Son Jesus to bear the penalty for our sin. And therefore, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life today. May we pray. Our Heavenly Father, how thankful we are for this time that we can spend together this morning. We pray for our church as it is scattered right now, but we pray that you will soon bring us back together because, Lord, we are so much stronger when we're unified. And, Lord, just teach us to pray. Help us to put aside our disobedience and our selfishness, our sinfulness, and our spitefulness, and look at your plan in our lives. Lord, protect us in these days of the COVID-19 virus. We thank you so much for those on the front line in the hospitals, in the uh, EMS, the police, the, the, the food stores, the ones that are helping us right now. Keep them safe. And Lord, thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. For it's in his name we pray. Amen.